Minnesota. Yes, very much so. In a Hall of Fame. Yep, thank you. Okay, Thanks, Bert. Right, that's Bert Blylevin. Wow. What a way Fantastic. to start off the show, the whole reason we came down here. In search of, and we got, unlike the Cal Ripken search. And well, the Don Zimmer. And the Don Zimmer, we ended up with the man, there Bert we go. Blylevin. Well, they're twin legend in his day, Mickey Hatcher. Mickey, thanks for coming on The Average Guy. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Number, number nine, Mickey Hatcher, huh? Number, number nine. <laughs> so anyway, um, how's life been treating you? How long have you been in the Angel organization? Well, this is our third year here. I've been uh, battling through with the Dodgers organization. I've been with Texas for, for a while. So uh, moving over here with the Angels has been great because it's given me an opportunity to come back to Minnesota. Well, hey, the Angels <laughs> The Angels are in a great uh, position right now. They got off to a bit of a rough start. Let's talk about Mike Sosha. How do you turn this club around? Well, a lot of it is just uh, mainly just meeting with the guys. Uh, we had a lot of little meetings uh, based on what we worked so hard for in spring training. And, you know, as anything, everybody wants to start off and have a hot season when the season starts. We face some good pitching, which puts some guys in a hole. So we got away from our game plan, and uh, we got back on track, and things have been going good for us. I'm kind of curious, Mickey. Talk about you were on the on the Twins team during the building era, uh, prior to '87. Talk about some of the memorable moments you had with the Twins and uh, just prior to the '87 season. Getting his chance to get traded from the Dodgers to the Twins was a start. Yeah. Yeah, but I had an opportunity to be here, especially when the young guys like Herbeck, Gaetti, Puckett, Viola, a lot of great guys come through this system. They always have been, even since I've been here. Uh, to be there with them and to see them rebuild. '88, '86 was a killer for me when I had to leave this organization because. I I really felt they were going to win it that year. I think bringing Tom Kelly on was a manager was probably one of the biggest moves they made because he's a great baseball man and uh, he really kept these guys going. They, they learned how to win and I mean that was a great thrill watching them win that year. But how great of a thrill was it though when you're taking left field and all the fans out in the bleachers would be going nuts and cheering, chanting your name? It was a great time in Twins baseball even during the lean seasons. Mickey out in left field. I mean, that was always a crowd pleaser. Well, I think that the, the especially with Kirby Puckett, when Kirby Puckett came on, that's one of the things I told him is that you got to acknowledge to the fans. The fans are what makes this game. Uh, you got to acknowledge that they're up there. And I did everything I could to wave, to to throw stuff up to them, to to acknowledge the thanks that, uh, for the cheering out there, and just play the game hard. That's what it was all about. And if I could teach any of these young guys that, that's one thing I tried to teach them. How special is it that you're here tonight, the night that uh, Burt Blylevin will be inducted into the Minnesota Twins Hall of Fame, a former teammate? Well, I think I was the only guy that uh, was able to be here to speak on his behalf, so I think they arranged that for him. Uh, but uh, this is a great thrill. I've always wanted to have a chance to roast Burt Blylevin, so tonight he's getting his roast for me. <laughs> but for the fans out there who... For the guy the, who gives it. Yeah. As much, okay, he, tonight he gets it. Okay. Yeah, he gets it. <laughs> but for the viewers out there, when you did get traded, you went back to the Dodgers, I believe, right? Yeah. And you happened to be there the night in 1988, the game one of the World Series, Kirk Gibson. I mean, that's one of those incredible nights that I did call. Sure. Me and Kenny were at a wedding reception. Gibson came up to bat and I said, Kenny, we're watching history. We're going to watch history. And of course, he hits it's it out. That must have been a... It must have been one of those fantastic moments to say, I'm here, I'm, you know, part of history. Well, I think that moment for me was the fact that I got to play in the World Series and I was a starter. Uh, to get that opportunity to get there, you know, and not missing it with the Twins, that was a heartbreaker for me. I mean, it hurt me. It felt like I was there with those guys. I was rooting them on. I mean, I had tears in my eyes the whole way through. And I rooted for these guys. And I, I, it, was, it was a matter of pulling for these guys and seeing all the hard work that they put through their years. And for me to go in 88 and come back the next year, and have that opportunity. I told my teammates, I said, we are not going to lose this. I am not going to lose it. I'm here now. Uh, we're going to do whatever we can to win. So it was a thrill to come out victorious. Because a lot of great players, your Ernie Banks, your Robin Yance, you never get a ring, but you know, through perseverance, you got it, and what a great feeling. Oh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to, to just bring the fans into something like that. And, I mean, I remember sitting there. I mean, it didn't matter where you were, people watching, seeing those hankies shaking here when the Twins were in it and seeing how enthusiastic the, the, the city came and supported their team was the same in L.A. I mean, that's what baseball is all about, and players need to understand that. Every game is important. Every, every time you step on that field, you need to play hard, and you play to win and you play for that world championship. Could you, ever, could you ever imagine baseball without the Minnesota Twins in the league? No, I can't. Uh, first of all, it's probably one of the best organizations in baseball, very underrated. 
for what they do for bringing kids through their system. They've always brought a lot of talent through their systems and a lot of times they went off to perform in other organizations but this is a great organization and I just hope they keep it here and people don't realize that they get a lot of good players through here. But outdoor baseball would be nice you know after a 20 year hiatus uh, personally. Well, I think, you know, with the, the new technology, I mean, it's helping to, it's helped a lot of stadiums with Texas, uh, Seattle. I mean, just putting one that opens and closes here would be yeah. fantastic because, uh, I mean, it's, it's nothing beautiful than being outdoors here when you got a nice day. Fantastic. Well, they haven't retired number nine yet here, but in our hearts, we've retired number nine, Mickey Hatcher. Thanks so much for being on The Average Guys. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I always loved it here. And you're the ultimate, I think, average guy in your own sense, aren't you? Uh, yeah, that average is I haven't figured out yet. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Mick. Thank you again. Right. You guys Thanks, care. Mickey. All right. Hey, wow. And in his day, he was a legend, Kenny. Yeah. When we used to come yeah. to the games. And favorite, absolutely. You know. Well, I chose number nine uh, to wear my softball jersey when we started the uh, famous Charlie Rebel softball team. Number nine, Mickey Hatcher. Fantastic. Yeah,